the love triangle. Triangulation is an effective weapon in the armory of the narcissist with regard to the achievement of the prime aims. Whether we are triangulating you as our intimate partner primary source with another potential love interest, real or imagined to provoke a reaction from you, to assert control and gain fuel, whether we are triangulating you with family and friends in terms of loyalties and spending time together, triangulating you with an event or behaviour, or even triangulating you with an object, our mobile telephone or our flash new car, you will always be triangulated when you entangle with our kind. Triangulation comes in many guises, but has two broad categories. Firstly, there is the triangulation which is taking place, but you don't even witness it. This is where, for instance, we are conducting an affair behind your back and you have no knowledge of it. This is still triangulation because we are involving three people in the intimate relationship. You, don't know, you do not witness it, but you might have suspicions which result in you being subjected to the assertion of control and the provision of fuel. Even if you don't know about it, the third party may well be aware that we are in an existing relationship and your presence is being utilised to assert control over that third party. The second category is where you witness the behaviour. For instance, we spend more time jabbing our cell phone and talking on it than spending time with you. We may, may mention of a particular person, often of the opposite sex, a lot of the time. We may even tell you that we have been carrying on with someone else because you don't show us enough admiration and appreciation, a blatant triangulation. In such instances, you witness the triangulating behaviour but often you don't actually realise that it is taking place. This is hiding in plain sight. You may well dismiss it by trying to convince yourself that there is nothing to be concerned about, or we may ease your fears through the application of charm and persuasion, dependent, of course, upon which type of narcissist you're involved with. One thing that you can be certain of, however, is that you will be triangulated in some way whether with person, object or event, and either obviously or in a hidden manner during your entanglement with us, and it won't just happen the once. This reliance on triangulation as part of our manipulations is because it's very effective at achieving many things. What then does triangulation achieve? First of all, it allows us to assert control, either indirectly or directly. It is often easy to implement. For instance, the simple making mention of someone, spending our time playing video games, meeting someone frequently, perking up noticeably when a person telephones or calls round. We obtain fuel from one and often two sources out of the same circumstances and therefore is a very efficient manipulation. It serves to assert control by underlining our notion of omnipotence, since we are able to orchestrate the actions of two people, so that they invariably end up competing with one another over us. We become the puppet master, jerking the strings of two love rivals. It creates uncertainty in one or more of the parties, which then allows the assertion of control to become easier. It also means that the party or parties struggle to see things clearly. It is useful as a form of deflection, as invariably, driven by emotional thinking, the participants in this love triangle focus on defeating one another in order to win us the prize, and they don't realise that we are actually the problem. It enables us to smear a disengaged intimate partner primary source with ease. It assists with the maintenance of our facade. Accordingly, the act of triangulation serves many purposes which accord with our agenda. Why is it so effective, however? There are several reasons behind this. Invariably, because the addictive quality of our seduction 
is so intense, the effect of the golden period is so powerful, that you don't want to lose it, and neither does, and the person that we are triangulating you with wants to gain it. It therefore is very much a prize worth keeping or a prize worth winning. The fear, driven by emotional thinking, of losing someone so apparently wonderful, loving and magnificent is too great, and therefore a threatened intimate partner primary source will fight harder to maintain the relationship and the third party, shelf intimate partner primary source or dirty little secret, will fight harder to prize us away from the grasp of the smeared intimate partner primary source who is placed in the role of abuser. The fear, again driven by emotional thinking and not logic, that someone else might actually succeed with the relationship when you are trying to get to that point. You have stayed in the relationship with the narcissist as loyal wife, boyfriend, partner. You have put up with the sustained devaluation. And now you're being triangulated by the narcissist with some upstart, insurgent, usurper. And you don't want that someone to reap the reward of all of your hard work and instead driven by your emotional thinking and a lack of understanding in certain instances about narcissism, you want to win the day. You would decide that you will continue to deal with the hardships in order to restore the golden period, which must surely only be around the corner. You, as the incumbent IPPS, feel that you know us far better than this upstart. You feel that it is your right. You've given everything to the relationship. And therefore, it is only just and fair, your empathic trait of decency, that you get to have the relationship. You may well have borne our children, helped us through difficulties, lent us money, housed us, dealt with problems for us, and you are damned if some Jane come lately or Johnny come lately is going to profit from all of your hard work. These are all valid factors as to why the act of triangulation is so powerful and effective. Yet, let me provide you with another reason why. One which is possibly just as powerful as the quality of the golden period. This is the conditioning occasioned by emotional thinking. You have actually been conditioned to think that love triangles are not only fairly common and something that is part of life, but you've been conditioned to think that they are actually rather wonderful and special. This may seem somewhat perverted thinking when you consider the agony and anxiety that you experience or you are experiencing when you are being triangulated, especially with a love rival. Why is the love triangle scenario seen as something wonderful? It gives you the opportunity to prove that you love us better and deeper than anybody else, and with that comes a powerful sense of self and validation. This is the corruption of the empathic trait of love devity by your emotional thinking. Codependents are particularly afflicted by this. It accords with your belief in the maxim that love can conquer all. Again, your love devity empathic trait is being corrupted, and you believe in and want to see love triumph. The harpy seducer, the Jezebel that comes along and tries to pluck the honest but misguided man away from his family life, only for the honest-to-goodness, down-to-earth, decent, principled wife wins him back through the power of love. You see off a rival, and that must be the true power of love. The love rival is the enemy. This just isn't, this is, just isn't you against her in order to win the heart of the unknown narcissist. It is light versus darkness, good against evil, love versus lust. You are a representative of the powers of light and goodness, and you will overcome your dark nemesis. Of course, what you invariably don't realise as a consequence of not knowing that you're dealing with a narcissist 
and the obscuring impact of your emotional thinking is that the person that you are fighting over is actually your nemesis. And of course, we're not going to remove that notion from you anytime soon. It's also rather hot and exciting. Your senses are alive. You are going to keep our heart, win it back. The tug of love, although worrying at times, also provides you with high-octane excitement. The rush of adrenaline when you score a victory. The elation at seeing us choose to spend time with you and not the other person. This back and forth, of course, is all driven by emotional thinking, because it is not logical to be locked in this. Your emotional thinking is making you fight to interact with the narcissist to feed your addiction by corrupting these love devotee traits. How does this conditioning to think in such terms come about? Well, it is a consequence, of course, of the obscuring impact of your emotional thinking. But it's also the fact that you have been misled into thinking that love triangles are commonplace and something which are, in essence, part of the dynamic of love in seeing off that rival, in preserving the love between two people. Love triangles have been used as a device throughout history. They are in film, in literature. You see them in the celebrity gossip sections of newspapers. They are commented on internet forums. They feature on the news. You watch them unfold in soap operas, on television, and you bought the t-shirt supporting Team Jacob or Team Edward, or was it Peter or Gail? You can't get through the day without seeing or hearing about some kind of love triangle. And it is invariably portrayed in a salacious, exciting, mesmerizing and romantic way. But who has created that narrative? Us. You see, many of the writers, the artists, the screenwriters, the authors, the poets, are narcissists. And therefore the prevalence of our utilization of the love triangle for the reasons that I've mentioned earlier in this video permeates its way into popular and classical culture. What then happens, as with so many aspects of the narcissistic narrative, something I shall be talking about in another video, is that it enters the mainstream, causing normal and empathic people to think that this is an everyday part of a romantic dynamic and failing to realize that actually it's unhealthy and driven by narcissism. Viewed from the narcissistic perspective as an appropriate and relevant part of the narcissistic dynamic involving two other people in a romantic setting, we create the concept of the love triangle, creating some kind of nobility out of it. Who will triumph? How noble to fight over one person's heart. However much you may not want to admit it, you know that the concept of the love triangle is alluring and fascinating. You do not often hear somebody declare, all three people need to take a long look at themselves, stay away from another and evaluate what is really going on before they continue to hurt themselves and others. Of course you don't hear that. Where's the excitement in that? And of course... The narcissists aren't going to write in such terms when they create the fiction that you so readily consume. And even where a non-narcissist writes, of course, they're writing for the purposes of entertainment. And invariably, the empathic writer may well be drawing on their own experiences of, guess what, the narcissistic love triangle. You have been fed a daily diet of triangulation throughout your life. So you actually regard it as something to be expected and something that excites because of the corruption of your love devotee trait by your emotional thinking. In order to demonstrate this point, I've compiled off the top of my head as many love triangles as I could think of in literature, film and real life in just five minutes. Consider the following. Literature. Twelfth Night. Dr. Shivago. Dangerous Liaisons. A Tale of Two Cities, Lolita, The Great Gatsby, Atonement, The Talented Mr. Ripley, Don Quixote, The Count of Monte Cristo, The Age of Innocence, The Phantom of the Opera, The Twilight Saga, The Hunger Games Trilogy, Harry Potter, and, of course, 
Wuthering Heights. Film. Gone with the Wind. Casablanca. His Girl Friday. The Graduate. Oklahoma. Damage. Titanic. Bridget Jones. Closer. Vanilla Sky. Sabrina. Grifters. She's the Man, which is a rewrite of Twelfth Night. Indecent Proposal. Being John Malkovich. Fight Club. Imagine being triangulated by an imaginary person created by yourself. Real life examples. Cleopatra, Mark Antony and Julius Caesar, which actually went even further with triangles within triangles as Mark Antony had two wives already. Helen of Sparta, Menelaus and Paris of Troy. Meg Ryan, Dennis Quaid, Russell Crowe. Bill Clinton, Hillary Clinton, Monica Lewinsky. Liz Taylor, Richard Burton, Eddie Fisher. Taylor and Burton met whilst filming Cleopatra, a triangle within a triangle. Kristen Stewart, Robert Patterson and Robert Sanders. Not only did Sanders also have a wife and kids, but Stewart seemingly through her fictional triangulation was not enough and wanted a real-life version too. There are many, many more. I'd be interested to know of other examples that you can think of. Please do comment in the comment section with your examples of triangulation, whether in fiction or real life. I know that you can think of many others. This is what I came up with in a short time, and it doesn't end there. You are triangulated by products and advertisers. Are you an Xbox player, or do you play on the PlayStation? Red or brown sauce on your bacon sandwich? Pepsi or Coca-Cola? On it goes. With such a backdrop of triangulation across society, thrust in your face every day, you are consequently and repeatedly conditioned in the way that I have described. You've no chance but to be affected in this way. Accordingly, when our kind comes along, having created triangul triangulation all around you, it becomes so easy to implement it with regard to our control of you and the drawing of fuel. I'm H.G. Tudor. Thank you for listening.